This video is supposed to be a success story of building a custom drift car. But no. Instead, I'll share with you my failure, which is still valuable due to some insights I got. Everyone who ever thought about printing an RC car has probably seen the Duke Dogs chassis. I first printed it more than a year ago, but found that PLA gears are too weak to handle the momentum from a powerful brushless motor. A few months ago, I realized that I had an option to order stainless steel gears from today's sponsor PCBWay. More of them later. In my mind, such gears should last forever and eliminate all problems I had before. But building a regular car is too boring, so I decided to add a drift assistant to it. From previous videos, you know that I'm building Better Ride, the ultimate car configurator. So adding a drift assistant sounds like a sweet spot for me. I chose the BMI 160 gyro and started searching the internet, hoping to find some solutions or at least explanation how to build the assistant. Putting aside all technical details, the assistant works pretty simple. The gyro continuously measures the car angular velocity and tries to correct it by adding the steering. If the velocity is too high and the car in one step away from uncontrolled sliding, the microcontroller receives a signal to apply counter steering. It also works in the opposite direction, when gyros see that the car is rotating way too slow. In this case, steering should be adjusted more aggressively into the turn to start drifting. With that logic in mind, I printed the chassis to be able to tell the algorithm on the table. And if you don't have an access to 3D printer, you can still enjoy this car assembly by ordering all parts from PCBWay. You don't need to actually bang your head against printing settings. Just drop in the STL files, choose the material suggested in manual and press order. I printed the whole chassis in PLA, but for mechanical parts there is an option to use steel, which honestly feels like a magic when I look at this quality. As the chassis was done, I found the thing which I believe killed the project. The burned Quad ESC. Actually, it's only 75% dead, since one out of four ESCs is still alive. It's a garbage for FPV, but what not putting in a car, since I only need to control a single motor. It's already seen some shit in the past, so I decided to resolder and clean it first. Then, it need to be properly flashed. Here's the thing. Most FPV fly controllers use the shot to communicate with the ASC. But for ESP, it's a tricky challenge, possible but really hard to implement. The simpler way is to flash ESC in 3D mode and control it using PWM signal. Unfortunately, I didn't find how to do it without better fly pass-through, so you need to have FC in order to flash the speed controller. Once that done, I started building the electrical schematic. The 6S battery is connected to ESC with an XT60 connector. ESC has output power lines as well as a signal wire. But the 24 volts will instantly kill the other electronics, so I added a back converter to reduce the voltage to say 5 volts. From the back converter, I'll power the ESP, servo and BMI160 model. The ESP is only responsible for reading data from gyro using two I2C wires and controlling the servo and motor with a single wire each. The schematic looks valid for me, so I decided to assemble it on a breadboard since I want to solder the components permanently. This also allows me to put gyro exactly in the chassis middle since it's highly recommended for correct velocity measurement. As a small bonus, by placing all components on a breadboard, I've unlocked the possibility of adding dampers to reduce some parasitic vibrations. From this stage, I started fighting multiple problems the build had. First, the gyro need to be calibrated, because after powering it up, it constantly reads some electrical noise and treated it as movement. I did this with two methods. First, the BMI-160 has internal calibration, which could be called by sending a specific command according to Bosch manual. Second, during a small period of time, I read the gyro data trying to calculate the average drift. Lately, I'll apply it as an adjustment to the actual readings. It's a crucial to keep gyro still on table during calibration. Then, I found that it was necessary to add into a beta ride some visual hints with the ability to set the gyro position. Without such adjustments, you don't actually know which direction the car is rotating, left or right. These improvements helped a lot, but still sometimes the gyro picked up variations which caused the absurd velocity measurement. A small bump makes the sensor go crazy, 
and as a result cause unpredictable steering movements. I added two simple filters before the pit controller as well as some fine-tuning settings into BitArite, such as target angular velocity which should be around 70 degrees per second, minimum threshold to disable the assistant in regular turns, and maximum correction angle. The assistant looked promising on the table. But, once I put the car on the floor, I faced some dangerous issues. First, I found that the ESP reboots for some reasons, and during this reboot, the motor starts spinning unpredictably. As a small protection feature, I added motor disarm if there are no active connections with controller, or no explicit input from the controller for longer than half second. I also pulled down the ESC signal wire with a resistor. The car becomes safer, but reboot still happens. During the bug, I found that it was caused by server. For some reasons, it overloaded the bug converter despite the current manual being way too far from the bug threshold. Anyway, adding a separate bug for ESP and a separate one for server solved the problem. But now, I started noticing some weird reboots from the ESC, which are easily identified by the startup tone. Since the ESC was damaged, I tried to change it with a new one, but that didn't help. And the weirdest part is that I can't reproduce it on the table. After spending some time with BL Healy documentation and LLMs, I realized that the issue is probably mechanical. Despite the gears being perfect, the whole system isn't rigid enough. Some friction and print imperfections cause the mechanic to get stuck during startup. The ESC detects it and goes into protection mode. There are several settings in the ESC configurator which should help with such cases, but it seems the friction is way too high. I tried to play around with screw tension and motor position, and it had an effect, which lasted a few seconds. Then the screws become a bit looser and the issue come back. The possible solution is to use regular ESC, which shouldn't experience such problems, or lower KV motor for higher torque. But I didn't have proper ones. Moreover, I don't think the issue goes away completely due to plastic flexibility. So I decided to give up with this chassis and give the build another shot, with a belt-driven system which I've started working on.